Hello and welcome to another Raggies Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Tonight, from the Audi uh, Mini Beer Festival, although they haven't really classed it as that, but I have, because you release 10 beers on the centre aisle, you know, it is a beer festival of sorts, even though they haven't really advertised it as. Um, this is from the Bootleg Brewing Company, Urban Fox. Which is a 4.4%, uh, so this is their, their, in their words, a cunningly brewed red rye PA. PA? Not IPA, no. Packed with citrus hops, crafty, charismatic and doggedly drinkable. Oh yeah. So, never had this before, never heard of the company either, so total newbie for me. And like... Like everything, you know, it's good to try new beers. You know, don't want to drink the same rubbish in, in, you know, day in, day out. Which is why, I mean, I, I actually homebrew my own beer as well. And uh, I get to the stage where, unless it's a beer I really, really want to try on a homebrew, you know, 40 pints of it or up to 40 pints, you know, this, I just don't want to be drinking that much of one particular beer. So, we'll do a pour. Apologies for the glass. It's uh, just been used for another review and I'm not walking up to the uh, house. It's too cold as it is. And would you believe it? September, um, 24th September, there was ice on the windscreen of my car this morning. Walked out, I thought, what? Oh, there's a bit of dew on the car. Went to walk, did the windscreen wipers? Won't move. Ice. Ice in September. <laughs> what a wacky weather we have in Britain at the moment. Was it global warming or was it just just some wacky weathers? Who knows? So, yeah. Um, to say it's a, a, a red, craft red ale, it looks more like a, a reddish brown ale to me. Plenty of carbonation. Nice slightly off white head there you go and a decent head as well of course I'll put a bit more in there we go so Whoa. and there's something to note don't get your nose too close to the glass when you're trying to smell it oh, I've done it again So, straight away, even in the froth, you can taste the hops. The smell hops as well. Um, so it says it's brewed by Exmoor. Hmm. That can't be right. No, it's not Exmoor. Bootleg Urban Fox. Ah, here we go. That's better. Good dear. Got the wrong... One company. Yeah. So, definitely hops in the taste straight away. Just waiting for this to load up. So, on ratebeer.com, uh, it's had 17 ratings. So, it's a new beer. Um, bootleg, uh, a brewing company in Manchester. 2.96 out of 5. So we'll have a look, see what it actually says. And um, so, pours a red brown colour, as I already said. Taste is well balanced, fruity and hoppy. Quite a nice beer. Same, uh, a bright reddish amber pour with a loose white head. Lemony citrus aroma. A rye body with a pleasant citrus taste. And some rye bread spice to finish. A pleasant rye ale. There is a a trend, shall we call it these days, to have these rye beers. I don't understand it myself. Um, I must read up on it and find what, what's the big, um, you know, uh, thing about rye. But uh, it does seem to be very uh, prevalent in, in a lot of different breweries these days. So, th this was um, on cask at a pub somewhere. Uh, going back two years ago, 
deep chestnut brown with a lacing head, hints of cocoa, red wine, and a faint ascetic note on the nose. More dry cocoa, a light dusty spice, biscuit and some peachy toffee on the palate. Well, it's citrus on the nose. Um, where's this bloody red wine coming from? I don't know what he was on about. Must have been taking drugs. Um, so someone else has put wine, not red wine. No, 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 no. Drank enough red wine to know what red wine smells and tastes like. Um, short white head, light floral and fruity elements. Oh, that's more like it. As a light but noticeable bisky malty undercurrent. Some nice citrus fruits, but fruits rather, but some vegetal notes that I didn't like. So so. And here we go, another one. Uh, lightly toasted grains in the nose. Some leafy hops, bread. Light sweet flavour with bitter, bitter grain husk, orange peel, yeah, I'll agree with the orange peel, toasted caramel, leaves, earth, light bodied with fine combination, carbonation. So apart from the bloke who says there was wine in it, um, God knows, he must have been drunk. Um, you know, obviously it's citrus. It's a bit hoppy, it's citrus. Very citrusy in the taste. I'm trying to see if I'm getting any biscuit from it. And I did actually get from a review last night. Oh, I've got the worst shoulder ache. Um, from a review last night, I did um, actually pick up on some uh, biscuit in the taste, which was wacky because I never normally catch up on that, but I did last night. So, it's fruity, it's hoppy, and it's actually really quite pleasant, really. Not a drink you want to swallow, Dan. You know, it's one of them you want to um, enjoy. Oh. Definitely leaves a nice uh, tingle on the tongue as well at the end of it. What we'll say is a little bit gassy. I'm feeling the gassiness coming through. From the carbonation. Yeah, reason my shoulders hurting. Using a hedge trimmer tonight on the top. Uh, today at work on the top. Doing this hedge and you've got these. It's not been done for a year. And the old style of gardening Everything used to get cut, hedges used to get cut twice a year and all councils now and most people, bar people who work in, you know, on their own gardens are doing it, you know, once a year and the problem is it's a false economy because it takes two or twice or three times as long to cut it and then what you get is the, the wood, this is privet, but the branches are so thick, you're going through it and it's absolutely jarring as you're going through it. Hence, I've got the worst shoulder ache. And I had shoulder ache for a year. And that was since the last time I did loads of edge trimming. So, uh, pain on the agenda tonight. Although I dare say, I shall have a drop of the old red to numb the uh, pain as you do. I should prescribe myself some uh, medicine. So, mm. yeah, this this is quite a nice, I would say it's a quaffable beer, you know. It's, uh, where was it? 4.4%, never heard of the brewing company myself, but there's so many these days, up and down uh, the country and uh, it is, to me, it is absolutely fantastic that I think Britain is the brewing uh, capital of the world with beers. You know, uh, you go to America, it's all bloody Budweiser. 
um, you go abroad, um, obviously France it's wine and uh, Spain it's you know Estrella or uh, San Miguel and obviously wines as well. Germany, they do their beers, whether they do their beers like we do, more wheat beers over there. So for actual real ales and that, you know, these days it is a massive, which is why micro pubs, because micro pubs aren't affiliated to any chains, um, you can have 20 different beers on the go. And then these little shops that are opening up with bottle beers that you can go in and try. Fantastic idea. You know, if I had the money, it's where I'd go. I'd, I'd have a, a shop. And I remember the old days when I used to live in, I used to live, live back in the 80s, this was. Uh, I used to live on North Shield Street in Nottingham, uh, next to the Arboretum. And obviously that's what got me into gardening. But we used to have a real ale shop on the corner of what, what is Mansfield Road and Huntingdon Street. And on that corner there, and you could go up and get yourself a barrel of own brew beer. And uh, them days, it's all, you know, it's come back again. And uh, not to that extent, but, you know, going somewhere and uh, going into like a, a pub shop, as long as the prices are okay, you know, don't, you know, don't charge silly prices. But if you imagine you've got 300 different beers you can try and, you, you know, you're socialising. And, you know, it is an amazing um, idea. Just, uh, you know, the ability, I don't want to go into a pub and be in that pub and all you've got on offer is Guinness, John Smith's, Carling, Foster's, you know, and, you know, and, and the odd, maybe a Green King uh, IPA. And, uh, you know, it's boring. You know, I want to go into a pub and... Uh, not only have you got certain things on cask, but you've got like a selection of bottles, 30 or 40 different real ales. And especially if it's you're visiting somewhere new, uh, you're going to a city that you've not been to, and you've got their local ales, where well, you can buy them over the bar, you know. As a country, uh, and, as, a, and as, an in, as an industry, you know, we need to be, say I go to Manchester, or Skegness or wherever, and you walk into a bar and uh, you try, you want to sample the local, any local ales, and then you want a selection of, um, say you've got the pennies on you to get the, you know, get a few bottles. Oh, well, yeah, I'll have a bottle of that, 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 that. You know, it's sales for them, and uh, you know, it's something new to try, new reviews. I'm off to um, Northern Ireland in February, late February next year. And uh, last time I was there, I picked up quite a few different beers, managed to smuggle, smuggle them home in a suitcase. Well, this time we're going over in car. So I'm going to take an extra 100 quid or so, and I'm going to buy every single um, beer I can find, any beer I can find uh, that's from Ireland. And so I can review a lot of them. Because obviously, you know, if you, don't, if you visit somewhere... You don't visit somewhere regular, you know. It's a great place. It's a great place, time to stock up on your beers. So you go around the UK, uh, visiting anywhere around the UK. Go in them local shops, brew, and have a look for local breweries. You know, get in there, go and buy yourself some different beers. Anyway, back on subject. Sorry for rattling. This is it's a very nice. Um, it's a decent beer with citrusy elements, you know, and a bit of hoppiness. It's definitely a beer that you could drink more more than one pint of, definitely. Oh, I mean, if I were, if I had three or four bottles of this, I could definitely neck, you know, all of them. And it's pleasant, no nasty aftertastes, you know. So, um, score out of five. Ooh. It's difficult because sometimes you don't want to give something too high a score. I'll never give a beer five out of five. It is never happening because of the fact that, uh, you know, unless I meet, I drink the, the best beer ever. 
So for this, uh, I reckon a good 4.2 out of 5. You know, it's, it's a nice beer. And uh, part of the Audi beer festival that isn't a beer festival, that they haven't uh, advertised as a beer festival. Yeah, it's, it's a decent beer. Oh, and 15 minutes for review. That's what I get for waffling. So, that's Bootleg Brewing Company, Urban Fox. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.